Hello everybody and welcome to That's Football. Are Liverpool already out of a top four race? Now you may have heard Jamie Carragher and Gary Neville speaking on Monday Night Football and they think they are. Jamie Carragher, ex-Liverpool legend, saying that his side, Liverpool, are not going to get top four this season. I think it's premature. I really, really do. Look at the league table next to me. They're 10 points off top four at the moment, but they do have a game in hand. Now I've got a financial charity bet with Ben Foster here, but obviously it's beneficial for me as a Man United fan if Liverpool don't get top four because it means we probably do and I don't mind giving money to charity if Liverpool fail but I've got to say I don't subscribe to Gary Neville or Ben Foster or Jamie Carragher's view that Liverpool are out of the top four race so what are your thoughts we're gonna dive into this look at the league table there are only 19 games played by Liverpool that means there are 19 games left to play that's 57 points 57 points onto what they've got now. I think it gives them about 96 points. They'd win the league with that. But of course, they're not going to win every single game because Liverpool's problem at the moment is they just cannot find the form. They cannot find the consistency and they cannot find the momentum. However, if they were to win their game in hand, they've got Manchester United at Anfield. So that would be a four-point gap if they won those two games. But they've got to win all the other games. I think their next three Premier League games taking away the FA Cup They've got Wolves away, Everton at home, Newcastle away. And then I think they play Man United at the start of March. So I think in four or five games time in the Premier League, we're going to find out where Liverpool are because they are probably the one club in the league with Man City that have got the history of being able to go on a run consistently and win games consistently. I'm not saying they're out of the top four race. I, I think that they're in it. But Liverpool, as we've seen already, are their own worst enemy. I think missing people like Jota and Diaz is huge and I still don't think they're back for another month or so. In fact, I think Van Dijk might be better be back before them. So they're very reliant on two new signings, Gakpo and Nunez, finding form and rhythm. And Salah, I mean Salah, I think Liverpool's season has been built on the fact that they're, well, well falling apart on the fact that yes, you lose Mane, Salah drops off, the midfield drops off, the defence has problems. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's across the whole team they've had issues. Hardly anyone in a Liverpool shirt this season has been consistently good and that has caused them problems, undoubtedly. But can they stay bad all season? Are Liverpool going to be consistently bad all season? There was a time a couple of years ago where everyone said Liverpool weren't going to get top four and then they came through at the end, they got into a rhythm at the end and they ended up getting into the top four. I still think that they can do it. I still think that... People are getting lost in the fact that it's the end of January. Man United and Newcastle deserve to be top four and that's where they're going to be. But the league table doesn't lie. Most teams are only hitting the halfway point, which means there's loads of football to go. I get it. Psychologically, you think start of February, it's not middle of May is not that far off contextually and it's probably going to end up how it is. But the same at the relegation battle, I think, is the same for top four. What it comes down to with Liverpool, and this is where I do sort of agree with everybody saying that or a lot of people saying they're not going to get top four it's how Liverpool find some form if they could beat Wolves away if they can beat Everton at home and you'd expect that and then they go to Newcastle and they get a positive result I mean that not only will that be nine points for Liverpool with it you know they still have that game in hand but they'd also have three points over a team that's in the top four and I think building towards that Newcastle result they've got to go into that game with wins I look at that Liverpool side, it does look unrecognisable. It's odd. It's odd how unrecognisable they are. But on the other hand, I also feel that with a manager like Klopp and some of the players they've got, how long is it until the likes of Trent, Robertson, Henderson, Fabinho, Thiago, Salah, players coming back, maybe Nunez, Gakpo, how long is it going to be before they actually do just click into gear? And then when they do... They're very difficult to stop. So I think it's a dangerous thing to write Liverpool off from top four. And I'm going to still say I think they're going to get it. A lot of I think Gary Neville said, I think Gary Neville put Arsenal, Man City, Man United, Spurs in. And I think Carragher put Arsenal, Man City, Man United, Newcastle in. Um, I'm going to put Arsenal, Man City, Man United, Liverpool in at the moment. Um, I'm still not 100% confident that Man United are going to get top four. I, I wouldn't say it on the United stand because I don't want to jinx it. I still think there's so much football left to be played and we are starting to look tired already and we're playing loads of games. So it's still possible that it, it could go wrong for Manchester United. 
but I still I, I think there's more twists and turns. Now, could anybody else get into the top four race? A lot of people say Spurs. Spurs are Spurs. They're so hard to predict. Um, I want to know what your top fours are and whether you think Liverpool will get top four. I still think Liverpool can get top four, and I still think top four is really hard to predict. Spurs are really, 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 really unpredictable. We know that. Um, I think that they are really hard to judge because they go and get a good result at Fulham, but then they'll get comprehensively beat somewhere else. Uh, Newcastle just don't concede goals, um, but you just don't know what they're going to be like for the next few months. Um, if they add something in the January transfer window, it can help. I've got this weird feeling that Chelsea are going to start playing really, really well soon. But I think with Chelsea, they don't actually have a game in hand, do they? I think Chelsea are currently 10 points off with the same amount of games played. The problem with Chelsea have got is I think that I do think they'll start playing well, but I still think that Chelsea are in a, in a transitional season um, and, it, and it might be just too much for them to, to close that gap. If I was, I wouldn't rule it out. All I'm saying is I wouldn't rule Chelsea out. I think when Jao Felix comes back in, Mudrick looks like a good signing. They can get people like Reese James back and Ben Chilwell and Kante. I think Chelsea could become a good team. But the problem everybody's got is how easy is it, because it's not, to go on a run where you can close a 10-point gap and get yourself in a race. In previous seasons, I think you could do that. But it's such a competitive league, you can't ever... I mean, look at Liverpool. You go, Wolves away should win that Everton at home should win that but it wouldn't surprise you if they didn't drop points in either if they did drop points in those games and then Newcastle away so it's very hard to go on a sustainable run and it'll be the same for Chelsea you look you might they might look at their games and go well Fulham is their next game at, at Stamford Bridge should win that but wouldn't be surprised if it isn't and then where do you go you know you might have an away game against Everton which could be tough or Villa it's very hard to close a points on the board is what I'm trying to say is really important at the moment because I think when you look at the title race Arsenal look really strong, but we all know it's going to come down to the two games against Man City and then potentially Man City are in touching distance. Points on the board is key and that is why I think Liverpool are still the dangerous one that if they can somehow find some form, they've got the experience to fall into a rhythm where they go and get results. But volume of games is going to kill everybody. I mentioned it about Man United on the regular and I think it's a problem for Chelsea and certainly Liverpool. Liverpool have had a lot of injuries and... They're not in good form. So finding that form and finding that rhythm is so difficult when you're playing a game consistently two or three times a week. So I'd say Man United and Newcastle are in a good position and it's going to take a hell of an effort. There is a big gap of teams in between them, of course. There's Brentford, there's Fulham. Um, and there is, of course, Brighton and Spurs. But it's in their interest to just stay quiet and not be in the conversation. But what are your convers what, what, what's your thoughts? I think it's too much for Chelsea, but I wouldn't be stunned if they got in a top four race. Um, I think they're going to start playing well, but how easy is it to go and win the amount of games you need to do in this league? It's very difficult. Um, of course, the relegation battle is ridiculously competitive as well. I still think Liverpool could get top four. Admittedly, I'm not as confident as I was maybe a few weeks ago, but I still think they could do it. In their current form, I can see why people are writing off. Get your comments in below. Smash a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe. I'll speak to you on the next one.